Attention shoppers, tonight on The Checkout, solving the world energy crisis, <laughs> one fizzy sugar drink at a time, the lunchtime cosmetic procedures that aren't raising eyebrows, and the downsized chocolate, now with 10% extra. Scam. Advertising. We see it everywhere. But what we don't see is the ads aimed not at us, but at the people who sell to us. And the ads in trade mags, well, they tell a different story. Take VB. We all know how VB's advertised to us. A hard-earned thirst needs a big cold beer. And the best cold beer is Vic. But in National Liquor News, Australia's leading liquor industry magazine, this is how VB's advertised. Vic Bitter retains these loyalists and helps keep them spending in your venue. Which I don't remember from the TV ads. You can get it jumping. You can get it pumping. You can get it being retained as a loyalist as you keep spending at a venue. American Express says this to you. It's all about helping you get everything from greater rewards to more memorable experiences. But even if you don't remember those experiences, American Express will. Because this is what they say to traders in Australian Hotelier magazine. Real-time spending data we compile from billions of transactions globally creates a unique view of your customers. Spying on your customers may be standard practice, but even advertising has moral limits. After all, the Advertising Standards Code states... Advertising shall not depict material contrary to prevailing community standards on health and safety. And the government agrees. Tobacco advertisements not to be published. That's why when cigarette companies advertise to you, it looks like this. <laughs> they can't advertise to you at all. But in convenience world, the trade mag for convenience stores, petrol stations, news agents and tobacconists, it's a different story. Unfortunately, the laws about showing you cigarette ads are so strict that we can't even show you the ads the retailers see. So we've had to make a few minor adjustments to the ad. You probably won't even notice. Bursting with coolness, it's the perfect time for a new highly mentholated value offering. Turns out there's a loophole in the tobacco advertising ban that lets cigarette companies advertise to retailers. But don't worry, advertising promotes good causes too, like Dermalogica. They use it to promote Fight, a charity that helps female entrepreneurs in poorer countries. The goal, to help women in developing countries access small loans. Although they're at in Professional Beauty, the leading business-to-business -business magazine for the Australian aesthetics industry, shows that's not their only goal. See for yourself how Fight will contribute to your healthiest bottom line ever. And a healthy bottom line means they can sell us more cigarettes bursting with coolness. <laughs> Almost every time we visit a website or install software, we usually agree to a long and complex set of terms and conditions. Often we don't even read, will you stop that? Often we don't even read what we're agreeing to. Here are the iTunes terms and conditions, all 24 pages of them. But before you click agree, did you read this section? You also agree that you will not use these products for any purposes prohibited by United States law, including without limitation the development, design, manufacture or production of nuclear missiles or chemical or biological weapons. That's right, you agreed not to use Apple's iTunes to produce nuclear, chemical or biological weapons. Which means Kim Jong-un isn't just trying to destroy the world, he's also breaching his iTunes contract. Is there no line he won't cross? <laughs> Apple's terms and conditions are so extensive that if you had your iPhone plugged into your iMac and were using iTunes, all their terms, conditions, privacy policies and user agreements combined would create a book that was this thick. And that book would really suck. 
Apple aren't the only culprits. The DVD for Disney's Sleeping Beauty had over 120 pages of terms and conditions. Now I know why she's asleep. <laughs> Wasn't that bad? Not to mention website terms of use. Almost all large websites have them. The ABC is coming just shy of 1,500 words. And the Fairfax website's conditions of use are a riveting 3,250 words, all of which you tacitly agree to by using their sites. And then there's Facebook. Add up all their guidelines and community policies and you're looking at more than 27,000 words. Is it any wonder that people have trouble keeping up with their privacy policy changes? Remember all those emails you got about them? No, of course you don't. And Facebook have changed those settings 26 times. All you probably know about them is that every one of those changes gave you just a little bit less privacy. You couldn't read all these conditions even if you wanted to. To just read all the privacy policies you come across in one year would take you 76 days. Decline. GameStation, a British online gaming retailer, took advantage of this on April Fool's Day a couple of years ago when they quietly changed their terms and conditions so that people signed away their immortal soul. 88% of users complied. By the end of the day, they had 7,500 souls. The devil really was in the details. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back downstairs. Although the Souls Clause was clearly a joke, when Google Chrome was first launched in 2008, its license agreement included... You give Google a perpetual, irrevocable, worldwide, royalty-free and non-exclusive license to reproduce, adapt, modify, translate, publish, publicly perform, publicly display and distribute any content which you submit, post or display on or through the services. Google removed the clause, but for a while there, anything you did through the browser could have been used by Google any time, for any reason, for all of eternity. It's not quite your immortal soul. But it's pretty close. <laughs> it turned out Google had accidentally copied the clause from a different licensing agreement, which goes to show not even the companies that write these actually read them. So I guess they don't really matter then. So all these terms and conditions, I mean, we don't really read them, so they don't mean anything, do they? Well, that's not quite right. The law's still working out what people have to do under these agreements. But you can't sign away your soul. God damn it! The fact is, you can't sign away your consumer protections. And there's a special section in the Australian Consumer Law which voids standard form consumer contracts if they're deemed to be unfair. So what you're saying is I don't have to read it because if it's unfair, the consumer law will fix it for me. That's not true either. What's fair will ultimately be determined by a court. But there's plenty of terms and conditions that a court may think are fair that you may not like. So it's taking a bit of a risk to leave it up to them. That look right. So what's the alternative? A congressman in California has proposed legislation where all privacy policies would have to be 100 words or less, which would make it way quicker to not read them. And if you don't have your own team of lawyers, you can use programs like EULA-LISA to scan your agreements and alert you to any strange terms relating to privacy, data mining, tracking, or selling your immortal soul. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. In the meantime, millions of people agree to contracts daily that they haven't read, that they probably wouldn't understand, that have terms in them that haven't been tested in court and that could be invalid anyway. And you simply have to accept them. There's no button for renegotiate. Well, two can play at that game. Why don't you accept the terms and conditions? You accept it? Oh, that's good, okay. You've got to agree to use Yahoo as your search engine now, okay? <laughs> Except, uh, you just made an in-app purchase of $120 worth of Smurf berries. Can I have the money now? Sorry? It was an in-app purchase. You just accepted it. Oh, Sorry. You accept the terms and conditions, sir. That means you've got to piggyback me around for the rest of the day. Oh. Hi, can I help you at all? You don't have to help. We're just seeing whether people accept these terms and conditions. I'd like to understand how I can help you. You can stand on the accept thing. So how can I help you? You could send out other people who will stand on it. <clears throat> okay. This is an impasse. <laughs> it's fine. You should see the privacy settings you just signed up for. If you step on this, you agree to have embarrassing graffiti behind your desk. Oh, that's already happened. What a shame. <laughs> Cadbury.
For many years, I have rewarded myself each day after work with the sheer indulgence of a single Cadbury Dairy Milk chocolate. As a compliance auditor by trade, I've always heartily endorsed Cadbury's calculation of 15.7 grams as the correct treat size. Lately, on inspecting my meticulously maintained treat stockpile, I noticed that the Cadbury treat size 15 pack has dwindled almost imperceptibly from 235 grams to 180 grams, while the price has been mysteriously unaffected. To put it another way, you have unilaterally reduced my daily treat from a satiating and truly rewarding 15.7 grams to a dispiriting, borderline insulting 12 grams. As a lifelong Cadbury devotee, you will not be surprised to hear me asking... Why is it so? I am by disposition an optimist. I prefer to think of the glass of full cream dairy milk as half full, but meticulous research has uncovered that my mistress is not the only victim of your stealthy chocorexia. Like a Machiavellian Willy Wonka, not only have you magically shrunk my treats by 23%, which is both stealing and a gross misunderstanding of the point of magic, but even the queen of the Cadbury Empire has shriveled by your evil shrinking curse from her majestic 250 grams to a far less statuesque 200. So Cadbury, although I cannot help buying your products thanks to a chronic, albeit treat-sized addiction, make no mistake, I do not buy your new marketing campaign. Now bigger, with more in every piece, asterisk. New generous blocks, asterisk. Asterisk indeed! A miserly 20 gram mitigation so soon after unceremoniously stripping away 50 gorgeous grams, trumpeted as offering 10% more joy, the hide of you! Properly audited, it is at best 40% less misery. And if you were to persist with a self-congratulating display of a fair trade logo, which guarantees a better deal for third world producers, Perhaps you might consider offering your first world customers that too. In my opinion, the entire Cadbury range should be marked best before January 2009. Best wishes to Joyville from Got the Serious Shitsville. Bridget M, CCO. We are facing an energy crisis. Energy crisis. Energy crisis. The energy crisis. You know, if you look at all that, you'd be forgiven for thinking the world is in the middle of some kind of energy crisis. The truth is, though, we've never had more access to energy. As long as it's consumed in drink form. And that's just as well. There was a time where if you wanted to do an everyday activity, like backflip on a motorbike or literally plummet to Earth from the edge of space, you had to turn to a strong pot of coffee for support. Or, more likely, just not do that thing at all. Looking sharp, Jeff. <laughs> Classic Jeff. The worldwide energy drink market is worth an estimated $37 billion a year. And in Australia, we're just seeing the tip of that iceberg. Which is a shame, because that iceberg looks like it'd be wicked fun to snowboard down. Even so, we've still got a fair bit of that market. Now, you'll have heard of Red Bull and V and Mother, but if you're just limiting yourself to those drinks, you're really denying yourself the extremitude of some of the online brands. Brands like Crunk. Here's a brand so extreme that the name alone requires three exclamation marks. Let's get a can of Crunk. Thanks. But if Crunk isn't your cup of Crunk, then why not try one with ginseng, or pomegranate, or folic acid, or milk thistle, or horny goat weed, or creatine, or vitamins B3, 9, and 12. Or you could just quit your bitching and try them all at once. But what is it about brands like Red Bull that makes them so extreme? Well, check out these amazing ingredients! No, 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 boring, no! The secret to Red Bull is an ancient and mysterious stimulant known only as caffeine. 80 milligrams of this stuff! Why, that's as much as a cup of coffee! Or a strong cup of tea! But wait! There's also about six teaspoons of sugar! But wait, there's also taurine! Which, according to these studies, barely has any added effect at all! caffeine is a cup of coffee, then why are the wowsers are so hell-bent on regulating it? I need some facts. Time to find me a wowser. Where is he? Uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll be soon. Okay. 
I am so sorry I'm late. I was I was doing a thing and now I'm not doing a thing. And hi, how are you? Uh, good. So, um, we, we were doing uh, a piece on energy drinks and you said that um, they're potentially dangerous. Why would you say that for even? Well, energy drinks contain a significant amount of caffeine. I know, I said that before. I don't know if you saw it, I was on a jet ski. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> No, I didn't. But um, if you drink energy drinks to, to excess, you can get caffeine toxicity. Okay, and what, 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 is that? what does that mean? It can lead to palpitations, tremor, anxiety. It can cause seizures. Yeah, 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 I know seizures, whatever. No one does 12 coffees while partying on a Saturday night. I get it, blah 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 blah, blah. Like, It can lead to psychosis in rare cases, and even rarer, death. Right, but, but I mean, how, how, how common is sort of overdosing on, 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 on caffeine? Or it whatever. is increasing because of marketing to uh, young people. Mm, stop right there, actually. Sorry. Yeah, I've got a report here from the Australian Beverages Association that clearly says, in bold, no less, that energy drinks are not marketed at children. If you can think of anything that children hate more than BMX bikes or women in bikinis, I'd like to see it. Oh, yes! Yes, but, you know, young adults and teenagers are attracted to these drinks. So I have no memory of the last 30 seconds. How many of these have you had today? 11 That's not a number. Thanks for your time. <laughs> and despite what the experts say, whatever that was, the fact remains that these drinks are awesome. Plus, they're a source of energy that's exempt from the carbon tax. And I think we can all rest easy on that. There. Are you in the market for a lovely loaf of bread? Uh, yeah, I I've only got about $3. I've got the perfect one for you. Have a look at it. It's multi-grain. It's great now, but it's got a lot of potential if you put it with a spread in the future. It's perfect for the first bread buyer, and uh, we expect it to go for about $270, $280. Really? I thought... No, 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 I know. This one next to it went for $250 last week, and the baker is keen to sell. Fantastic, I'll take it. All right, let's open the bidding then, shall we? And we've got 350, 370, 410. You won't regret this one, sir. Up the back. And sold to you for 650. Well done. Congratulations. You said 270, 280. I know. I'm as surprised as you are. How am I ever meant to break into the bread market? Have you considered buying off the plan? Want a healthy snack? Trail Mix, it's the delicious healthy snack for people on a trail. Or people who like to mix. But maybe not here. With 4,000 kilojoules, 43 grams of sugar and 60 grams of fat in this bowl, it's got all the energy you need to get through about half a day. This bowl, by itself. Or, to get rid of all that energy, you'd have to spend 20 minutes doing each of these. Trail Mix, it's for trails. I'm Fiona Guthrie, the Executive Director of Financial Counselling Australia. If I could say one thing, it's more important than ever to pay your debts on time right now. And here's why. Until now, your credit file has only showed credit applications, 60-day defaults, court judgments and bankruptcy. But from December last year, banks and other lenders started to collect information about whether you made each loan repayment on the due date. This is because from March next year, Australia will move from a negative to a positive credit reporting system. This means people who pay on time will have a good credit rating, but making late payments might make it harder to get credit in the future. It could even mean you'll pay a higher interest rate to borrow money. If you think you won't be able to make a loan repayment or pay a bill on time right now, speak to your lender. If you're worried about your credit rating, do not go to a credit repair agency. They'll just charge you money for something you can do yourself. Companies that keep your credit information would rather you didn't know this, but you are entitled to a free copy of your credit report at least once a year. If you think your credit report is wrong, you can complain to the lender or to the credit reporting agency. If you're not satisfied, you can then complain to an independent industry ombudsman. You can also contact a free and independent financial counsellor on 1800 007 007 or go to our consumer website, debtselfhelp.org.au. Want to grab some lunch? Oh no, I think um, I'm going to get some work done. You 
be amazed how much work you can get done at lunchtime. There's Botox. <laughs> laser hair removal. Teeth whitening. Not to mention Fraxel. LED light therapy. Chemical peels. Microdermabrasion. Fat dissolving injection. Skin needling and good old fake tans. G'day. As Aussies, we like to think of ourselves as natural, fresh-faced, outdoors types. But the face of Australia is changing. And if the national spend is anything to go by, Aussies can't get enough cosmetic procedures. OK, maybe we can. But if you're a consumer who's thinking about getting some cosmetic procedures yourself... Thank you. Remember, the many imperfections of the cosmetic industry can easily be concealed. <laughs> Not very long ago, the only way you could get your teeth whitened was professionally, by a dentist. A dentist? Thank you. But today, you can get your teeth whitened from a beautician or at a salon for about $200 or less. The price is less than a dentist, but so is the regulation and the level of expertise. For a few thousand dollars and no formal training, pretty much anyone can set up shop offering teeth whitening. According to the Dental Board of Australia... Teeth whitening is an irreversible procedure that should only be performed by a registered dental practitioner. The voluntary self-regulating trade group, the Australian Cosmetic Teeth Whitening Association, says... Dentists are not trained at university in the provisions of the power whitening procedures. Though even they recommend seeing a dentist before you get your teeth whitened. And to make sure they're not accused of practising dentistry, some businesses get you to administer the treatment yourself. Which is not the usual behaviour of a reputable health professional. Ow! Be careful of DIY teeth whitening generally. Because in 2011, the ACCC warned customers that the most hardcore DIY whitening products out there are unsafe. Botox and other anti-wrinkle treatments are known as Schedule 4 medications under the poison standards. That means you can only get Botox on prescription from a doctor. And I mean a real doctor. Schedule 4 medications also can't be advertised, but in Australia today, they are. They're just called injectables. Botox use is soaring in Australia, and that's amongst women and Shane Warne. As the industry grows, even group buying sites are offering Botox deals. Some doctors are concerned Botox is not being properly supervised. To comply with current regulations, reputable businesses like Injectables ensure that Botox is given by a registered nurse under the supervision of a doctor. Um, I think they're the wrong way round. Botox is so easily available now. When you see the practices and qualifications of some businesses, you could be forgiven for raising an eyebrow. If you actually could raise an eyebrow. So before you become a Botox after, take care deciding on who will inject botulism into your face. Because botched Botox isn't pretty. Thankfully, the use of lasers in Australia is strongly regulated, if you're pointing them at aeroplanes. And the rules are enforced. But lasers pointed at our bodies are a different story. Laser machines used to be extremely expensive and were used by doctors mostly for hair removal. Today you can buy a laser machine for about $2,000. The Therapeutic Goods Administration regulates imports of machines for therapeutic purposes. But hair removal isn't considered a therapeutic purpose. It all depends on the individual business, but the results from some non-medical operators are shocking. The advice from non-doctors can be pretty shocking too. Like this piece of actual advice a beautician gave a burned client. Oh, don't worry, Dal. You can just go to a solarium and even things up. So if you're thinking about getting a lunchtime procedure, just remember that the risk is all on you. Because when it comes to lunchtime procedures, the regulators are out to lunch. It's F YouTube time again. The video gripe segment that gives consumers the chance to complain. Can you sh stop shuffling, please? Can I'm recording, just no noise. Shh. Even sometimes about consumer issues. In this case, Brett Holsey's also annoyed at how Officeworks says... And if you find an identical stocked item at a lower price, we'll beat it by 5%. Care of business. But when Brett rang Officeworks, they said... It doesn't cover cheaper items with non-identical warranties, sucker. Seems the normal definition of identical item and Officeworks definition are, well, non-identical. 
Price matching guarantees are designed to make a consumer store has low prices. But a recent US analysis found they're riddled with exclusions and fine print and poorly enforced. So catch them out if you can, but the fine print shows when they say... Taking care of business. The business they mean is... Office works. Now to a different kind of FU from viewer Shannon Chant. When the San Remo lasagna she bought turned out to be infested with weevils, Shannon put the inedible sheets to a different use. Bravo, Shannon, you certainly should get compensation from San Remo. And hopefully it won't be in the form of this. Next up is Robert Clark. Robert recently ordered a chicken wrap from a Nando store, but then, because of a $10 minimum FPOS rule, had to buy a drink he didn't really want. So Robert asks a question lots of you have been asking. What's the deal with minimum transaction amounts when paying by FPOS? And one no one else has been asking. Why Nando's? Why? But which we still thought was worth putting to them. Why Nando's? Why? And their answer was... The practice is not encouraged by Nando's Australia, but a small number of franchises have minimum spends because some banks apply a fixed cost to transactions. Well, Robert, it's simple. When you use FPOS to pay a retailer for something, there's actually up to three other parties who get a cut. It's not illegal to impose FPOS minimums. In fact, FPOS the company actually has lower fees for transactions under $15. But retailers also have to pay fees to whoever they get their terminals from. And, and those, those deals, deals could make, make small payments, payments uneconomic, uneconomic in some, but not all, cases. cases. Nando says that fixed bank fees as a percentage of the meal can be as high as 13% on a $2 spend, 5.2% on $5 and 2.6% on $10. See? Simple. Sure, but FPOS minimums are consumer unfriendly. Why not just give us the option of paying the actual transaction cost? In summary, Robert, FPOS is cheaper than paying by credit card, but it's still a pretty obtuse system and extremely effing tedious to pin down. And finally, from a complicated issue to a simple one. G'day. Just wanted to let you know that I'm completely naked. Yep, police, please. Oh, except for maybe these clothes. <laughs> and I never, ever drink apple juice either. Oh, except maybe just then when I drank some apple juice. A bit awkward. Certainly is. But the simple point this complicated man's making is that if you're going to say... Spring fresh. Tastes like apples, cos it's nothing but apples. But the back of the bottle says this, then you run the risk that someone like this will say something like this. Spring and fresh. Last time I checked, preservative 202 and citric acid were not apples and they don't grow on trees. A good point. Well made, Andrew. Thank you. We've got nothing but respect for you. That's it for this week. Please keep the video gripes coming to futube.net.au or just email tipoff at thecheckout.net.au. We'll see you next week for the last episode of The Checkout. Julian Morrow hosts Drive on Radio National 6pm tomorrow and every Friday. Next, what do you do when your house is more shabby than chic? Call in the Queen of Crafts, Kirsty Allsop, and turn unloved items into homemade heirlooms. Don't miss Kirsty's Vintage Home.